Joshua had done great work in leading the major campaigns and conquering kingdoms, age had now caught up with him. This was a reality that he could not run away from that God simply confirmed to him. You are very old. The second reality that comes out of this text is that not all the land had been conquered. The Lord said to Joshua, you are very old and there are still very large areas of land to be taken over. God then goes ahead and describes the land that is still not yet taken. It was actually bigger than the land that had already been taken. Some of these realities sober us up. One of the realities that many of us do not want to face is the reality of age. The reality of age. Do you notice when you ask a person their age, how they become jittery? Very jittery. I don't know what this thing about age is all about. Because it tells us that you are headed towards your end. Your expiry date is nearing. And so we do not want to confront those days. In the pursuit of our dreams, sometimes we find that we are growing older. We are confronted by the realization that time is running out or has run out. And you look back over your life and though you have made some progress, your original dream is not yet realized. And yet time is gone. There is still much land to be conquered and no time to conquer it. For those people in the midlife, this is what we call the midlife crisis. Many people, when they get beyond the ages of 40, 45, 50, going to 60, is a crisis. Why is this crisis? Because they look back where they have come from and they can say they have come from very far. But they look where they are going and they know that where I'm going is very near. <laughs> because now you have spent more than half your life. And especially as you begin to see your age mates die. Then you realize, hey, time has run out on me. It gets many people into a crisis which is called the midlife crisis. How do you know that a person is a midlife crisis? For men, this is where men, we as men, do many crazy things. To cope with the midlife crisis. You'll find a 45-year-old man, a 50-year-old man, moving around with a 20-year-old. You know that man is in? crisis. That man is in crisis. Why, why the 20 year old? So that they can satisfy themselves that if this young, nice, beautiful girl of 20 can accept me, then I'm not that bad. <laughs> I, have, I cannot be that bad. Your wife could be telling you you are growing older, but the girl is telling you you are the best. And it sounds nice in your ears. This is the time when men marry second wives. Check out. It is very difficult, not very difficult. It is very unusual to find young men in their 30s marrying a second wife. It's very unusual. They are there, but they are, it, that's unusual. They are, their crisis has started a little earlier. But in the 40s and the 50s, there are many. Those who, some are courageous enough to actually marry and bring home and make them their wives. Others, what do they do? They have concubines kept in different parts of the city without the knowledge of their families. But that is where they go to 
console themselves that I'm still okay. I'm still okay, isn't it? Those who cannot keep concubines, what do they do? They are moving around with this and the other and the other and you find they have so many girls around them. Midlife crisis. Brother, just face reality. Age comes upon every one of us. Just face. God knows that you are old. In fact, very old. <laughs> are you together? Just face reality. This is a time when people borrow loans that they cannot pay. Because you have realized you are now in your 50s, you have never built a house which you had dreamt you would build. Now your time is running out, you go out and take a huge loan when your retirement age is coming in 5, 10 years. And you cannot pay for that loan. You end up in a crisis. People do crazy things when this crisis comes. What that is telling you is that you, are lens, you need lenses. You need lenses. Your vision is out of sync. You need lenses. What lenses do you need? Lenses that say, God knows. Put on here. You are very old. Who told Joshua he was very old? God. God knew that Joshua was old. God knows you are old. God knows that you have not built that house. God knows. And when you put on the lenses of God knows, you relax. Hallelujah. You relax. Because maybe you are never meant to get that house. Maybe you are never meant to do that thing. Maybe you are never meant but as I'm going to say in my next point, you put on a different lens also. Crises like this can be very paralyzing. I have seen ladies in midlife crisis. Oh, ladies in midlife crisis. You see a nice old lady in their 40s. No. Why is it that when we are talking about men, you, ac you accepted that 40 is old. <laughs> and now when it comes to ladies, 40 is young, young. So you see a young lady of 40s. <laughs> or in their 50s. Or in their 60s. But now suddenly it occurs to them, I am not as beautiful as I used to be. Now they want to make up on that crisis. So you find this lady of what age? 60, okay. You have agreed. <laughs> it's going around with a dress that reaches here. Now you're wondering, at 60 year old, when you were 16, there were things to show down this way. But now that you are 60, surely what are you showing? They are withered. They have served the Lord in their generation. <laughs> now just face reality and get an appropriate dress that is worthy of a 60-year-old. Amen. Face reality. We know you are 60, so we don't expect you to wear miniskirts. You see a 60-year-old with a very tight trouser, with a tumbo cut, and you are thinking, my friend, leave that to your daughters. Leave that to your daughters. We are aware. And you know what? God knows. <laughs> God knows that you are old. Not just old, very old. <laughs> very old. So there are things that you certainly cannot do. God knows. And because God knows, you can relax. When I turned 60, I was excited. Because it's a reality of life. I cannot change that fact. Brethren, I cannot. I wish I could tell you I'm 16, but I'm not. Are you together? But you know what? There are things that only a 60-year-old can do. 
That is where I want to concentrate my life. That's where I want to focus on. To do the things that only 60-year-olds can do. And there are many. The other day I read an article. Actually, it was from a journal that has research that had been done. And it said men are at their best in terms of productivity. Not of children. <laughs> their productivity between 60 and 70. So imagine I'm just entering that stage. <laughs> Brethren, I can only do what? 60 year olds? Why bother myself with the 20s? Surely. God knows. God knows that yet another year has ended and you do not have a job. God knows that you have been sick for five months. God knows that you have been sick for seven years. God knows that you have been in that troubled marriage for ten years. God knows that you are turning 40 and you are still single. God knows. He can tell you even better. So, when people come to you and say, my sister, he still haven't found someone. Tell them, God knows. Hallelujah. You have been married for five years and you have no children. You tell them, God knows. You have four years since you graduated and you have no job. God knows. What is the significance of that? It gives clarity to your vision. It gives clarity to your future. It removes you from this panic that comes with life. Lift up your eyes. Wait upon God. Listen to Jesus, the author and finisher of our faith. He knows what the plans are. 